Welcome back. It's a new day and a new year, and it's time for more Boost. If you didn't see the first part of this Boost tuning series within my larger tuning series, the link up above will get you caught up. Today, we're in the car with a map that's reasonably tuned below 100 kPa, which is zero Boost. And I'm going to show you some pulls and how the VE Analyze feature in Tuner Studio, aka AutoTune, handles it. Uh, just so we're on the same page, you need to have the car fully warmed up driven for i would say at least 10 minutes and you'll want to have any boost controllers to be disabled we want wastegate pressure only for now for this car that means we're going to be working with about 8 psi and as we left off in the last video we had set our boost control protection uh, to 140. it's a nice low level of psi and um, that'll leave us with enough headroom to go out and make several passes and be sure that we're in a good range for our fueling. Now, one thing to check out is you can notice that um, this particular map is pretty rich. If you look at these two valleys right here, it's about 10% more air, but it's about 23% more fuel. As we go to higher pressures, of course, our AFR is going to be richer. We want it that way. Um, but we can't have it too rich, otherwise the car will feel like it's hitting a wall, basically. So I'm out here on a fairly flat piece of road with several places to either pull to one side or to turn around to go back the other way. And I'm doing third gear pulls, which means I can do the speed limit and still get into higher RPMs. Uh, boost is gonna come on quite early for this turbo and I'm starting each run at about 2,000 to 2,500 RPMs. So let's let, take a look at what happened and I want to describe the feeling of what happened as well so you get an idea of what you can expect. We did very quick pulls here and as we got up uh, above you know, the 125 row, we hit boost cut and we got into here and then this is where the car basically started bucking um, and uh, it, like it was bouncing off a rev limiter but physically moving around and jerking you around. So your inst instinct, which is correct, is just a lift at this point. And we're gonna definitely adjust the boost cut so that we can go a little bit higher than this because if you notice the RPM was only about 3,500, 3,600. So let's watch those same couple of pulls again, but this time we're going to focus in on our fueling. So looking at your uh, air fuel ratio gauge here on the left, we're gonna see what it does when we make this pull. So that's about where it should be, 13s. As we get into the pull, it starts going down and super rich, 10 AFR. So what that feels like is really a rev limiter in your car um, when it hits that rich of an afr it's going to just stop making power and it's going to feel just like you hit the rev limiter now for making this video is way easier for me to describe um, this whole process by zooming in on some of the stuff that was happening live for you what you're going to want to do is make logs so you know a save a log you can open it up in the log viewer and you can see all this happening um, very easily okay if and only if you have um, seen a similar scenario where the richness is pretty high um, then you can up your boost control so that your your cutoff is not so low um, you know if you're seeing um, jerking in the car and then we can proceed to uh, continue tuning the fuel table. Pause. Let's stop it right there and rewind. Okay, so let's look at our air fuel ratio and our active filter. 
Autotune started desperately making changes to the fuel to match our target, but it hit 10 AFR and two things happened. One, the car stopped making power and the RPM stopped climbing despite 100% throttle. And two, a filter kicked in, stopping fuel adjustment called O2 out of range. And what that means is when your wideband O2 sensor goes either too rich or too lean, basically pegged at either end of the scale, it will stop adjusting your fuel um, which is what you wanted to do because at that point your O2 sensor may have failed. It doesn't know. So at either end of the scale, it will stop fuel adjustment. This is one of several built-in filters that can pop in and out uh, as your car hits various states. I don't really recommend changing them, but it is possible to configure them. Uh, there's an INI file which is located in the directories of the uh, Tuner Studio install that you can play with. So this is where it's located. Normally it gets installed under your program files and EFI analytics, tuner studio, and then INC directory. And there'll be this INI file called MS3, or if you have an MS2 or MS1, MS2 or MS1, VE analyze maps. In here, if you cruise down to VE analyze, it will have a number of filters defined. And um, if you go into here, here is our dead lambda built-in filter, um, which you can comment out by, if you put a little uh, hashtag sign in front of this, it'll comment out this line. So you can turn that off if you want. Don't really recommend that. But here's some other ones that will pop in and you will see them later in the video. Um, it does not adjust fuel when the acceleration enrichment is turned on or the decel enrichment or any kind of enrichment, basically. Um, this could be map or, you know, or the... Um, different enrichment styles that you can do. Also, there's no point in adjusting fuel when it's actually in a condition of spark cut or fuel cut or overrun any of these. Uh, so those are the things that uh, kick in automatically and you really don't need to mess with, but this is where it's located. Okay, so now that we've got some actionable data here, um, what I'm going to do is some inter interpolation. So what I'm going to do is select a few cells here. I'm going to make it go to 5,000 and we're going to smooth this out. So we're going to change this. This is the low end. This is going to be high end and we're going to fix everything in the middle. So to do that, we go up here to this horizontal interpolate and it's going to take all three of those columns and smooth it across. So boom. So this is a little bit more reasonable see what the change value was it was 150 here um, so what that's going to do is help us get more into these ranges as we proceed and it may change some stuff down here as we keep going but we'll see okay this is a couple days later actually and uh, we've done a couple of extra passes on the last one and then traffic started getting bad and there's a lot of you know just too many cars around for me to really do stuff uh, but it, the map hasn't changed too much uh, and while we wait we'll do a pass and you can see that this is just useless there was no point it, this got filtered almost immediately uh, auto-tune didn't make any changes whatsoever and you know so I was getting back into it here um, the goal is not to make pass after pass and just grind it out number one this is not good for your car to run it rich all the time Number two, it's just completely unnecessary and it's a waste of time. So you can do this in about five or six passes once you know what you're doing. And so once we get into the right range, then we can fill in some of the gaps with a few more strategic passes and interpolate all the rest. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to since now that we have some some data, we're going to take this information and um, for at least these two rows and try to fix it. Um, so we're going to start here and we're going to do some more interpolation. We'll go somewhere like that and we're going to interpolate. So that's going to reduce that a little bit. Okay. 
too many people behind me. And then 2008, go. Nice. There we go. So that felt good. I didn't have that rev cut like I normally do. Haha, <laughs> yeah, right. So this is voiceover from the future. As you can see, if you're paying attention, we were getting some of that O2 cutoff uh, filter happening. So once it got to the top, it was no longer adjusting our stuff. So um, fuel table is not changing. Now, how it felt in the car was that it was a clean pool. It sounded like it was, you know, proceeding up to red line. Um, and, uh, you know, it wasn't getting that jerky kind of feeling from what I call the rev limiter style cut of too much fuel. And, um, yeah, that's just an example of why you can't really tune by the seat of your pants. You have to look at the data. Okay, different section of road. We're going to do a few more passes here. Um, I was basically just doing this because there wasn't a great place to pull over. You can see some changes. But what you want to do is, after every pass, take a look at your data. You highlight over each cell to see how many times it got hit. You look at your logs and you can tell where you can start interpolating from. So you can see the giant cliff right there on about the 5,000 RPM uh, line. You can see how it jumps dramatically from say 116 up there at the top to 152. Um, and whenever it hits that higher row, the 160 row, it drops dramatically. So that's the kind of thing that you're gonna be looking at and um, you can keep safe and not, you know, have too much richness foul your plugs and your O2 sensor um, by stopping and doing some interpolation and fixing the table as you go. All right, well, hopefully you found this process straightforward and easy. There are other ways to do boost tuning, but uh, this is fairly simple, especially for the beginner. Uh, it keeps you focused on what you need to look at and to keep your engine safe. As you go, of course, always make sure to double check your temps, make sure your intake temps are not too high, your coolant temps especially are not too high, and then your oil pressure is always within range. So after every few passes, you may want to take a look. If it's a brand new turbo, you may want to pop the hood uh, and just uh, do a bolt check, You know, double check that everything is still in place and working the way you expect. Um, one of the most common things to happen on a first test is to once you start getting up into the top level of your uh, waste gated you know spring psi is to get some kind of blow out of your intercooler piping that's very normal and you can just uh, make sure to bring some tools to tighten that stuff down um, but that should do it for today let me know in the comments if you have any questions and i'll be happy to answer them stay tuned for the next one